Hey creator and welcome back or welcome if you're new here. I am Femme, I make knitting and crochet related videos on this channel and I also talk a little bit about mental health uh, or mindfulness, therefore the mindful creators. If that is something you're interested in, like this video, subscribe because you will see way more of it in the future. Today we have 16 size inclusive, again absolutely, 16 size inclusive winter and fall crochet patterns. We did the knitting patterns video uh, a week back I think by now or a week and a half when, you, when this video is uploaded and we now have the crochet version as I said that I was going to do. So I'm really interested in what you like about this video. Let me know if you see patterns you like below. I will link everything in the description and I will show everything in the screen here. So let's start. We start this video off with the Stony Shore Pullover by Rachel Misner. Uh, it is a really fun textured pullover. I am really interested by it, to be honest. I don't make that many crochet clothes at the moment, um, but I really like the texture crochet and give, and this is a real, really good example of it. Uh, I think it is some kind of bubble stitch uh, or puff stitch. Um, yeah, you can see there it gives a really, really fun texture, just a little bit different than your standard pullover or standard sweater. So this is really, really cool. As I did in the last video, I will also share the bust circumference for every pattern. So the minimum to the maximum. There are a lot of sizes in between, of course, but you can look them up in the patterns themselves. Um, I'm looking here, it has the minimum bust for uh, the first size of a 28 to 30 inch bust. And the last size is a 60 to 62 inch bust. That is size nine. The stitches can, that you can expect in this pattern are quite simple. So I think this is quite a beginner pattern. You have change, double crochet, a loop over, the foundation chain, um, single crochet. Yeah, so I think that it will be very doable as a beginner pattern. Then let's go on to our second sweater pattern. The second fender is the Sensum Sweater by Linda Skoya. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is also a really, really fun texture pattern. Somehow this this sweater is from this Christmas story. I don't know what it is. I think it will be a great sweater for like Christmas morning uh, or like even an evening, just a casual Christmas day. I don't know, I just screams Christmas. I don't know if it's like the, the, the stripes or like if these, as you can see here, kind of the stripey pattern in there. It might be, I think it reminds me a little bit of a candy cane in the best way possible. Um, yeah, I think it's really fun. Also really, really textured. It doesn't say much about the kind of um, techniques that you use, but I also think that there are some bubble stitch or a stitch in here with some double crochets. Um, it's also some way I'm saying. I think it will be really pre pretty straightforward when you see the pattern. Um, I think it's really fun. Again, this one has nine sizes. It fits a best 30 inch to a 60.75 inch, which is in centimeters. Uh, 76 centimeters to 157 centimeters. So that is a good range, I think. Um, again, I think this could be fun in so many colors uh, and so many ways. I think you can also pair it maybe with like a very fancy, like this, those those um, slip dresses, you know, with like a belt and then you, you loop it under there. I think it could be really fun. I think you can make it really casual, but also really fancy. Okay, we have the third sweater. That's the last sweater for now. This is the Rosebud Raglan by Knits and Knots. Again, a really good pattern. Uh, in the description of the pattern, she says that it is a simple textured pattern, which creates a non-see-through texture fabric. So that is really nice because sometimes as the last sweater you saw, of course, has some set of gaps, so you have to wear something in the need. This one you can, of course, but you don't have to. This pattern, again, has nine sizes. However, I do not see the bust circumference in the pattern description here. So that is something that probably is better described in the pattern itself. What I do really like is that there is a very clear gauge swatch uh, method. So she has some rows uh, that you can do in order to make your gauge swatch. Uh, also, you can see here in the pictures, there are many different colors used in this pattern, many different ways that people style it. So it's super versatile and will last you a long time. After these sweaters, we go on to the cardigans. So this is the first cardigan that I have for you. This is the Crop It or Not cardigan by MJ's Off The Hook Design. Um, it is a very fun staple cardigan, I think. You can make it short, you can make it long. She showed it here in the pictures. Uh, both versions. I can think you can make a lot of different colors again. It's, it's always ob always obvious that you can make it in a lot of different colors, but I think you can make some stripes in here. You can keep it uh, one color. 
you can try a lot of different things. This pattern again has nine sizes uh, and it fits a bust 28-30 to a bust 60-62. Uh, I think she has like a bit of a signed range, range for those bust sizes. This pattern is made with a herringbone stitch which creates this really really fun pattern. Um, so that is really interesting. It's just a little bit different than your standard cardi. Like these cardies with big buttons, you see them everywhere of course in stores also for patterns, but I think this one just is a little bit different and that is what I really liked about it and why I wanted to share it with you. One extra fun thing to mention, there's also a video of the pattern. So you can see that in the link, in the Reverie link, she also linked the video with some more instructions. So it makes it a little bit clearer. I think I really appreciate that because I'm a very visual learner and sometimes when I'm in a pattern, I'm like, is this the right side, is this the left side? So a little bit of a video just really helps for me personally. The second cardigan I want to share with you is the Tulip Square Cardi by Wilma Westenberg. Um, really fun. Also really different again. There is a pattern on the back and the front, so it, it goes completely through. You make it in squares and triangles and you sew them together in the end. Um, it, I don't think it's really a granny square to call it like that, but it has a really fun textured, almost lace kind of pattern square. It feels very spring also, so I think it can also really help in the transitional weather. You can make it a beautiful dark green for now in, in fall and maybe like a pastel pink in spring or just make a pastel pink now. It doesn't really matter, of course, which color you do for which season. But I think it could be really fun for both seasons. Maybe also in winter, if it's a little bit warmer where you live, that would also really work well. This pattern again has nine sizes, which fits a bust 30 to 30, uh, no, 30 to 60, well, 30 to 62 inches. Um, I see that a lot of patterns don't have like centimeters. Uh, you can translate it, of course, you can just calculate it. As you already saw in my last video, a lot of those sizes are quite similar from different patterns, so that is good to know. Also good to know is that this pattern also has a free version, so you can buy the version, uh, the, the PDF version on Ravelry. She also has a link to a free version on her blog there. Um, I see some things that she wrote down here for what is in the paid version, so the Ravelry version. Um, it gives the rhythm patterns in US terms, so those are good to mention, US terms. So if you use different kind of terms, keep that in mind, also for hook size, that's really important. Uh, charts for sizes and measurements, uh, graphs for squares and triangles, so the squares and triangles you use to make the pattern, of course, to make the cardigan. A photo tutorial, and a set of like visual things, so if you like it too, it would be really nice. And a video tutorial on YouTube. I am not sure if those things are in the free pattern too. Um, I would think it might only be in the paint pattern if I read it like this. So that is good to keep in mind. The third and last cardigan pattern that I have for you is the Rosebud Cardigan. Um, by Knits and Knots again. So I now just realized that those names are always the same. So we had the Rosebud, Rosebud Sweater or Pullover, she called it maybe. And uh, now the Rosebud Cardigan. I really like this one because it is a wrap cardigan. So we already had the button cardigan, we had an open cardigan, and this is a wrap cardigan. Uh, great for layering to keep you a little bit more warm than sometimes a button one or an open one, of course. Uh, so that is why I also wanted to include this one by the same designer. She also has some really good size inclusive uh, patterns. I don't think all of them are size inclusive. If I'm sure, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but she has some really fun crochet patterns to be honest. So really uh, recommend to check Knits and Knots out for her patterns. Since it is the cardigan version of the sweater that I already showed, it has quite a similar uh, texture, quite a similar fabric, only just a similar fit. Keep that in mind. Um, maybe if you like one of them very much, you can also make the other one or just choose one, of course. Also nine sizes, but she doesn't show uh, the bus circumference. Again, I think that's a thing maybe that she does. Um, she mostly shows the kind of sizes that she has, but not really the circumference. So that is probably in the pattern. Keep that in mind. Okay, after these cardigans, we go on to pullovers. So vests, pullovers, whatever you like to call them. I think those are amazing transitional pieces. Uh, maybe if you live in a warmer climate, as I already said before, it could be a good winter piece too. Uh, someone that lives in California that I just spoke uh, said it was like super warm still there. So that would be perfect, of course. But if you live in uh, Scandinavia, it will be nice for now, maybe even already too cold for now. For example, I live in the Netherlands. It is now quite warm, to be honest. It's like 20, I think it will be 23 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. I will put it on the screen if I find it. So a pullover would be great, or maybe even to a warm already. But 
just a great transitional piece. The first one that I found that I thought was really really fun and also uh, a bit more of the classical uh, colorful crochet style is this one. This is the Chili Slipover uh, from Holly Woodward Designs. Okay, I think this is really really fun. Again, a super colorful one that she made, but I think you can make it in any colorway that you like. I really like blue and green. If you didn't already notice, I have like a green pillow there. I almost always wear blue in those videos. So you could do like blue and green together or only blues, only greens. If you like more neutrals, you can do only beiges, browns, or you make it just very colorful as she did. So very, very uh, versatile. Something else that also is really nice, it is a granny square cardigan. But the thing with granny squares uh, sometimes is the hassle of putting them all together in the end. She made a way of uh, joining them as you go. So I think that this grade um, makes it a little bit less difficult in the end. Also maybe a little bit less weaving in or you do probably, you probably weave in as much as you would if it's not a join as you go. But it probably feels a little bit better. Do you understand what I mean? This pattern has only seven sizes, I just realized. I thought it was more, but I see that she has some uh, sizes combined. However, if you look at the circumference, it has uh, quite the range that nine sized patterns do have too. So um, <clears throat> you can choose the size that fits you best or make it more oversized. Uh, the circumference comes from 70 eight centimeters to 156 so that is quite the same as other nine size patterns keep that in mind when you choose this pattern i have one more vest for you pullover and it is this one it is the houndstooth vest by hannah alexander and i think this one is so fun um houndstooth has been I don't know if it's in like this year, but I don't really care to be honest. But it is. it has been a thing for years, many, many years, to be honest. Um, and I think it's so fun. Uh, I really like the look of it. She paired it with a t-shirt, but I think it's really, really cool. Uh, when it gets colder, you can put a long sleeve underneath or maybe something like a blouse underneath. Uh, very versatile also. Um, I really like how it looks. It, like it's a very tiny hands tooth, but uh, they are for very... very delicate or something. I don't know. I really like the look of it. I think you can dress it up, dress it down, just how you like. This pattern actually has no specific sizes. I'm going to explain what I mean with that. Uh, this pattern is made to size, so it would fit every size. She explains in her uh, pattern how you have to do it, how you have to measure, how you have to work it. Um, so I think that is really fun. I did a little bit of a different way of making a pattern. So you have to do a bit more thinking maybe when you're making this one. But it also means that you can make it really made to measure, really made to your size and how you like it to be. So that's a really interesting. She also calls it a advanced beginner pattern um, with the US terminology again. Really keep those things in mind because I have made the mistake sometimes when I made something which was US, ter US terminology. Uh, I use, uh, I don't know how you call it actually, but I'm, I use European or UK terminology or do I US? I don't know. I don't have like US needles, so I am not really sure what I actually use. The camera stopped. I didn't really know what I actually use, but I know it wasn't US. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we go on to sweater dresses. Um, this dress is going to explain why I thought last video that I had 15 patterns, but there were 14, 14 eventually, because I also put this pattern in, not realizing it was crochet. So that, that clears it up if you've seen that video. This is the Geneva sweater dress by Cara Carna Carnavali. Do I say it correctly? Cara, Cara Carnavali. I really hope I said it correctly. I think this is a beautiful dress and I didn't think at first that it was crochet I don't know why I probably didn't look correctly it looks like ribbing you can make ribbing of course with uh, knitting too so that's maybe where the, the the thing came from that I didn't see it and I also didn't put enough attention that it was crochet something that I really like about this dress is the waist tie um, with a lot of dresses, knitted dresses, for me personally, I like a little bit more of a defined waist. If I wear dresses that are completely straight, it makes me look like a potato. So <laughs> it doesn't fit my body that well. I have more of a, I'm in between a hourglass and a pear figure. Um, so if something is really big on top and like gets tighter only on the bottom, 
it just makes it like I'm wearing a bag. So this is why I really like this pattern. I also think it will fit a lot of different body types, not only a pair or a hourglass. I also think it could really fit a uh, apple figure or a straighter figure. Um, I think it's super versatile and can absolutely suit a lot of different people. You also see it in these photos. Uh, she used a very different kind of photos, which I really appreciate uh, because I do see that in many patterns that are uh, size inclusive, I'm not always seeing size inclusive pictures and I would really like to see that. Just, just see it how it looks on different kind of people. I am in this case only using pictures of the pattern itself. There are of course pictures of other people that made it, but I'm only using what the creator of the pattern uh, put in our Ravelry page to disclaim that. Good to know that this one again has nine sizes and it has four inches of positive ease. Um, as I said, with a tie you can make it cinched in, but it will be a little bit bigger on other places. Uh, keep that in mind, you can always play with it a little bit when you are choosing your size. Um, so looking if you wanted to have it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, just choose a size which maybe eliminates the ease or made it in a negative ease. Just what you like. Good to know that this uh, dress is made in panel, so back panel, front panel, sleeves, everything is made separately and you sew it together in the end. Now we go on to the next sweater dress. Uh, when I was searching for the dresses, I must say I mostly found a lot of children's dresses or even doll dresses, but not that many adult sized dresses. Um, however, Cara Carnivaldi that I just mentioned has some uh, few of those patterns. So I have another pattern of her. It is this one. It is the champagne dress by Cara Carnivaldi, as I already said. Um, as I just said, personally, for my figure, I don't know if this is the best kind of dress. I like to be a little bit more um, tighter my waist, uh, but I think it is a really, really beautiful dress. Uh, and I think it would still fit a lot of people, suit a lot of body styles. And it also really screams, I don't know, just Christmas dinner or New Year's Eve. Um, I think it looks really festive and I'm really excited about that because yeah, you can make wear your own crochet piece to a more fancy thing if you want to. And you could also dress it down, of course. It could also be like a really comfortable, nice crochet dress. But I think it could fit both occasions. This dress is made with a mock knit stitch and one detail that I really, really love about this dress. And what I think it makes it also fitting for those more fancier occasions is the back. Uh, it has a very deep V. As you can see here, it just looks really, really beautiful. So that is a fun detail. Uh, I don't know if I said it already, but she also does not have the bus circumference sizes in the reverie description. Also for the pattern that I just mentioned. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I expect, I hope that it is a bit in the same range as other nine size patterns. You just have to figure that out or look at it a little bit more into it when you are interested in making this pattern. From the dresses we go into the shawls and I have this one for you. This is the Sylvie shawl by Tony Lipsy. If you don't know Tony, she makes some really, really fun crochet uh, patterns. She talks, she makes videos on YouTube, on YouTube too. Really, really fun videos. She's actually one of the people that I first found too, I think, on YouTube when I started crocheting. Um, and something that she does a lot is Tunisian crochet. And this shawl is Tunisian crochet, or made with a Tunisian crochet technique, Tunisian crochet hook. Well, you really have to say that a few times back. Tunisian crochet, Tunisian cro that's difficult, but I'm, I'm getting off track. Uh, this uh, skull, skull, I do it again. Did you see the blooper in the last video? Skull and scarf, shawl and scarf. This shawl is made with Tunisian crochet, as I just said. I think it is really beautiful. Um, it looks really flowy. I love the little tassels on the end. Um, very versatile. I think you can wear it inside as the other picture is done here. But also maybe outside, if you make it in a little bit more of a thicker yarn. I don't know what is recommended for yarn. Um, but I think you can make it in a lot of different fun colors and make it very versatile for the transitional weather or the winter itself. If you are new with Tunisian crochet, she mentioned some techniques that are made uh, used in this pattern. So we have Tunisian simple stitch, that is I think the basic stitch from Tunisian crochet. I haven't done it myself to be honest, but I'm still very intrigued to try it. Um, Tunisian crochet shaping, Tunisian crochet color changes, and uh, surface slip stitching. So it does sound like it's quite the basic stitches of Tunisian crochet, so that is good to know. Um, 
She doesn't say if it's like a beginner pattern or not, but I think it would be doable if you uh, are not like a Tunisian crochet professional, you know? So I think it will be doable if you just start out with Tunisian crochet. What I also think it will be really nice, I don't know if that is what she used, but it looks like it's perfect for hand dyed yarn. Um, I think everything could be perfect for hand dyed yarn if you want it, of course. But the colors that she uses, it really looks like it would fit a hand dyed yarn. So that is really, really fun. Another scarf that I have for you, that I think is a perfect winter scarf, is this one. As the scarf already tells a little bit itself, it is the Make a Statement Scarf by Melissa Fisher from Woods and Wool. Uh, also someone that I follow on Instagram, I think she makes some really fun crochet pieces. Really colorful, but also really wearable, which is always something that I really like. Really, really, really. I said a lot. Something that I very much like. <laughs> um, this scarf is very much a statement piece. It has some really fun, really, it has some very fun <laughs> color blocks um, with some different kind of textures it looks like or different kind of color work. Super versatile can. Uh, you can make it with many different colors, really make it fit your style. Melissa also mentions that this is a beginner friendly pattern. So that is really nice and it is or like a blanket, oversized blanket pattern. I have a fly flying around here. I hope you don't see it. Um, but uh, yeah, something that is very nice for a beginner too. Now we go into the hats. And this one is actually still a little bit hat and scarf because it is a hat and scarf uh, set. It is the Mario hat plus scarf set uh, by Tony Lipsy. Again, I thought this one was just really fun, um, mostly because of the hat. That is what caught my attention. Um, I really like the pattern. It is very different. It almost looks like it is a very thick ribbing pattern, but I feel like it's... I'm not sure if it's like ribbing. It just looks very interesting as you can see here. Good to note also is that this pattern is a unisex pattern. However, I think you can make any pattern unisex if you want to. Of course, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, but I do think that this fits male and female very well, both of them. So that is really nice. Um, the head version, only the head, is also a free pattern on her blog. So if you're only interested in the head, uh, keep that in mind. There is uh, a link in the pattern here that you can check out for only the head. Another pattern that I found, I, I see that I'm repeating some designers that I didn't see that I... I did not think that I did that much, but it's okay. I really like the patterns. It is the Modish Mosaic Head. Uh, by MJ's of the crochet hook. So that's the designer that we already talked about for the cardigan. One thing that really stood out to me about this pattern that I think it is really, really fun, it's that it is a pattern that you can make for the whole family because there are so many different sizes in there. The size that she uses is from toddler to large adult. So I think that's really fun. So you can have like this hat in your whole family. What I also really like about this is sometimes you only have like maybe two sizes um, in hats. That is, they are not as versatile as clothing pieces or this is more an accessory you know so that makes it really nice because some people have a smaller head had a little bit larger head so maybe the large child size would fit better for you instead of like an adult or a large adult size so i think that is really nice you can really make this uh to measure she mentions that this design is more of an intermediate design but i think if you are a confident um maybe not Totally beginner, but a little bit, little bit further than beginner uh, crocheter. I think this also would be doable. Uh, I think it will be made intermediate because of the color work. So you have like these diamond kind of color work designs, so the mosaic that she mentioned. If you are comfortable with it, I would think this would be a really fun pattern to make for you. Then we go on to mittens, because for this video I did remember to put in mittens. And last video I did socks at the end, but the crochet socks, it is possible. Uh, but it could be a little bit less comfortable than knitted socks. So mittens it is for this one. I am going to butcher the same. I already know it. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is the Sprio, Sprio mittens. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't I have no idea how you could pronounce this. Spray, Sprio, Spray, Sprio, Spray. I'm so sorry. It is by Anne Michelle Villan. Villan. I, I'm so sorry if I butcher his name. I'm really trying. I'm so sorry. Um, it is a set actually. It is a mittens and cowl set. And it has the look of traditional knitting. Knitted mittens, color work mittens. But it is crochet actually. She uses a split stitch which creates the traditional Vs. Um, so that's really fun. It does make the fabric a bit denser, a bit thicker. So keep that in mind. Um, I think it will be really fun, warm 
cozy during the winter time. Um, also really like this color work. Uh, the triangles kind of color work in here um, looks like it would be perfect for the colorful person in your life. Or maybe make it more neutral. Everything is possible with this one. Then last but not least, the Country Cottage Mittens uh, by the Turtle Trunk. Um, this is more a classic mitten style. I thought it was really fun because of the thick texture that it has. And it has many sizes. Also a family friendly sizing. So there are sizes for toddler, child, adult small, adult medium and adult large. So pretty pretty good size range for some mittens I think. The designer calls it a advanced beginner pattern. Uh, so that is really nice. And there's also a free version of this pattern. So you can find the version in her rivalry page in the link there. Uh, so that is good to know. She doesn't say much about the kind of stitch that is used and I'm not 100% sure what it is. There are some ribbing as you can see, but I am not sure what made this fun texture. So that will of course be explained in the pattern, but keep that in mind. And with that, we made it to the end of the video. Uh, 16 patterns, cardigans, uh, pullovers, hats, mittens, scarves, what do I miss? dresses, vests. We had a lot, uh, 16. So I really hope you found some inspiration in here. Let me know what you really liked about this video, about the patterns, which patterns you like, what you want to be making. And if you like this video, like it, follow me here on The Mindful Creators. You can also follow me here on Instagram, where you can see some behind the scenes stuff. So that's really fun. And I'll see you next time. Bye creator.